A question I often get asked is what the specific micronutrient requirements are for people in certain stages of life as an example in pregnancy in childhood and also in older age so in this video we'll be discussing special micronutrient requirements for pregnancy children and older people my name is dr rawat i'm a physician in an origin england trained canada based currently enrolled on a postgraduate certification in nutrition at harvard and i'm passionate about making the best possible information available to my clients for them to reach optimal health most of the content on my videos is about weight loss and certainly losing weight is very important for a large number of clients for them to reach optimal health and reverse many of their metabolic problems however in addition to early time restricted feeding etrf pattern mild intermittent fasting which is essentially not eating after 5 pm 4 to 5 days a week i recommend a hyper nutritious diet so instead of recommending to you what you should not be eating rather than subscribing to some kind of diet tribe where certain types of foods are taboo and cannot be touched instead i like to focus on what you should be eating the kinds of whole foods nutritious foods that you should be eating and you will find that if you have a hyper nutritious diet automatically it will improve your nutrition it will improve your overall state of health and along with exercising sleeping well reducing stress having positive social connections avoiding addictive behaviors and substances you will overall be able to lose weight and that too in a sustainable long term and healthy way this video in which we'll be talking about various types of micronutrients will go some way in informing you what a general hyper nutritious or a well rounded overall globally nutritious diet looks like I'll also add that a lot of information on this video has been taken from the NIH website. I would highly recommend that you check out their website for more details. For most food groups, I will be quoting the top 5 foods which contain any given essential micronutrient, but feel free to pause the video, take screenshots to get the full list of foods which contain that particular micronutrient. Remember to share this video with any person that you feel will benefit from this information particularly pregnant women families who have children and also older people In pregnancy essential nutrients include omega 3 fatty acids folate or folic acid iron vitamin B12 zinc calcium choline iodine and vitamin d there are also certain foods which need to be avoided in pregnancy these include smoking alcohol excessive caffeine deli meats unless they are steaming hot unpasteurized milk products certain types of farm milks and cheeses any kind of uncooked meat product for example certain types of sushi high mercury fish the essential nutrients you require in childhood adolescence and also in the elderly are actually quite similar these include omega 3 fatty acids vitamin d vitamin k calcium iron folate vitamin b12 magnesium and phosphorus now we'll talk about where you can get these micronutrients it is important to point out that it is recommended that all ladies should start taking a prenatal vitamin which often contains good amounts of micronutrients along with omega 3 fatty acids 
before conceiving so you should have replenished and stocked up your stocks of micronutrients before even conceiving and most ladies will continue taking micronutrient prenatal vitamins throughout pregnancy and even while they are breastfeeding it is very important however to also know what dietary components contain more of these micronutrients now there are three types of omega 3 which are essential fatty acids for our body ala or alpha linoleic acid is mostly found in plant sources dha is considered to be more for brain health and eye health while epa is considered to be more important for heart health and the sources do differ ala is found mostly in plant sources like flax seeds chia seeds walnuts and also in seed oils dha on the other hand is found mostly in fish so that would be salmon herring tuna and other kinds of seafood there is a small amount of dha in eggs and chicken as well epa similar kind of story mostly found in fish and seafood the maximum is in salmon then you also have herring sardines and other kinds of seafood it's fair to say that while plant based foods contain a good amount of alpha linoleic acid it is very unlikely that you will get sufficient amounts of dha and epa purely from plants unless you consume a good amount of algae from the sea which is not really a food item which is commonly eaten in which case you would very likely require supplementation of dha and epa particularly if you are a strict vegetarian or vegan folate or folic acid is also an essential micronutrient in pregnancy lack of that can lead to serious congenital deformations in children including spinal defects like spina bifida healthy sources of getting folate include spinach peas asparagus brussels sprouts lettuce avocados broccoli kidney beans etc getting adequate amounts of iron is also essential in pregnancy particularly because the requirement for the amount of blood increases since it needs to be shared between the unborn baby and the mother healthy options for getting a good amount of iron include seafood white beans lentils spinach tofu dark chocolate kidney beans and fish vitamin b12 is an essential micronutrient for brain and neurological development healthy sources of vitamin b12 include seafood nutritional yeast which is a vegan food item which is very much like cheese fish such as salmon and tuna yogurt fortified cereals cheese eggs etc vitamin b12 is found almost exclusively in animal based food products it's really important that those who are strict vegetarian or vegan should get their vitamin b12 levels checked and be taking supplements if they are deficient in vitamin b12 zinc is an essential micronutrient and healthy sources of zinc include seafood seeds such as pumpkin seeds lean meats cheddar cheese lentils fish such as sardines and greek yogurt calcium is essential for healthy bones and healthy sources of calcium include yogurt mozzarella cheese sardines milk soya milk tofu fish such as salmon cottage cheese soya beans etc choline is an important nutrient and healthy options to get choline include eggs soya beans lean meats fish wheat germ kidney beans quinoa milk yogurt 
Brussels sprouts, broccoli, and shiitake mushrooms. Iodine is an essential micronutrient for thyroid function, and healthy sources include fish such as cod, seafood such as seaweed, oysters, yogurt, milk, iodized table salt, eggs, cheddar cheese, tuna fish, and certain types of fruits. Vitamin D is essential for our bones, metabolism as well as immune function but 90% of this would not be through your diet. 90% would be obtained through direct sunshine that too directly onto your skin. You cannot absorb vitamin D through your clothes. Also the sun has to be at a time when it is high in the sky so after 10 o'clock in the morning and before 3 p.m. It has to be on uncovered skin and it cannot be through a window or through a sunroof in your car. It has to be direct sunlight falling on your skin. So particularly in the northern hemisphere, if you're further away from the equator in a non-tropical country, for a large part of the year, um, up to four to six months of the year, it is expected that you will not be able to get the required amount of vitamin D through sunshine and so people in these countries would mostly have to supplement with vitamin D in certain categories of people particularly those who are darker skinned or those who are older their skin would not be able to absorb vitamin D as well also since vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin people who are obese would get more vitamin D getting dissolved within the fat and less would be bioavailable in the bloodstream. So those categories of people would also require a higher dose of vitamin D. Nonetheless, you can get that remaining 10% through the diet and healthy options to get dietary vitamin D include fish such as cod, trout, salmon, mushrooms, milk, soya milk, sardines, eggs, tuna, cheese, and lean meats. Vitamin K is essential for bone health along with vitamin D and calcium, but also for cardiovascular health in older people. Healthy sources of vitamin K include natto, collards, turnips, spinach, kale, broccoli, soya beans, and carrots. Magnesium is also an essential micronutrient and healthy sources to get magnesium include pumpkin seeds, chia seeds, almonds, spinach, cashews, peanut oil, soya milk, black beans, edamame, peanut butter, and yogurt. Healthy sources of phosphorus include yogurt, milk, salmon, cheese, lean meats, lentils, cashew nuts, and kidney beans. I'd like to refer women who are pregnant or breastfeeding to this document from the FDA about eating fish. Fish and seafood in general provide several key nutrients which are important for a child's normal brain development. They contain omega-3 fatty acids, iron, iodine, choline, Choline supports the development of the baby's spinal cord. The fish also contains iron and zinc to support the child's immune system and are also good sources of protein, vitamin B12, vitamin D and selenium. However, it is important that the choice of fish is one which is not very high up in the food chain in that you don't want a fish which lives very long and eats other fish because those types of fish tend to have higher levels of mercury. And here they also made recommendations on which kinds of fish are better choices for having lower mercury content. So you'll notice here that Atlantic mackerel, salmon, sardines, certain types of seafood such as shrimp, tilapia, freshwater trout and certain types of tuna are included. Notice that skipjack tuna, which is usually canned light, would be a good choice for low mercury content. Um, on the other hand, certain other types of tuna, 
would not be as good as an example of big eye chuna would be higher levels of mercury as well as king mackerel shark swordfish tilefish etc so again you'll notice that a king mackerel is higher in mercury level why atlantic mackerel is a good choice from the point of view of having low mercury levels while on the topic of fish let's talk about omega 3 numerous studies have shown the importance of dha in brain and eye development of children while the accumulation of dha in the retina or the back of the eye is complete by birth the accumulation carries on in the brain till about 2 years of age so it's really important that pregnant women as well as nursing women get adequate amounts of dha which is a type of omega 3 fatty acid in older individuals consumption of omega 3 has been shown to reduce triglyceride levels and has been shown to reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease there are some observational studies which suggest that having a diet high in omega 3 fatty acids reduces cognitive decline risk of alzheimer's disease and dementia there have also been case control studies showing that patients with lower dha levels had more cerebral amyloidosis or build up of protein deposits which lead to alzheimer's dementia and patient with higher dha had a better preservation of their brain volume brain atrophy or shrinkage of the brain which is something which happens as people age there is also observational data to suggest that populations who eat larger amounts of fatty fish have a lower incidence of age related macular degeneration which is a very common cause of vision loss in older adults the data on the relationship between omega 3 and cancer is less conclusive and there is some evidence that there may be a reduced incidence of breast and colon cancer in patients who have a higher intake of omega 3 there is also some evidence to suggest that omega 3 because of its anti-inflammatory roles may be beneficial for certain types of autoimmune inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and it is also being investigated for other conditions such as depression inflammatory bowel disease ADHD, childhood allergies and cystic fibrosis. So to summarize again, in pregnancy essential nutrients include omega-3 fatty acids, folate, iron, vitamin B12, zinc, calcium, choline, iodine and vitamin D. In pregnancy it's important to avoid certain foods such as smoking, alcohol, excessive caffeine, deli meats unless they are steaming hot, unpasteurized milk products or cheese products, uncooked meats such as certain types of sushi, high mercury fish such as shark, swordfish, certain types of mackerel and tilefish. In childhood, adolescence and in the elderly, essential nutrients include omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D, vitamin K, calcium, iron, folate, vitamin B12, magnesium and phosphorus. So what would be the healthiest dietary pattern, you may ask? To this I would say a whole food diet which is plant predominant so by whole food i mean eating food in the original form eating food which is as close to the original as possible avoiding ultra processed foods plant predominant may meaning that a significant amount of the food would be derived from plants On top of that I would say that a Mediterranean style pescetarian form of eating appears to be from a nutritional point of view the most superior type of diet. 
So this would be a kind of diet which along with vegetarian or plant-based foods also encourages fish and seafood. Now there will be some people who because of their religion or other kind of ethical principled considerations would object to eating fish and in response to this I'll be playing a video from Sadhguru whom I follow. And one more aspect of life, one more aspect of food is when you consume something, it must be of a simple uh, genetic code in the sense, it must be a very simple software. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, sprouts, they're very simple. More complicated means animal food becomes more and more complicated. Suppose you eat an animal which has some amount of emotion and a life of its own. Now the code in that we were talking about this, your body is just an accumulation of memory, which means a certain software, isn't it? This is the most complex software. Human software is the most complex software on the planet of all the creatures. So if you eat an animal, particularly a mammal, if you eat, it has a similar kind of complexity, maybe not as complex as this, similar level of complexity because it has thought and emotion of its own. Now for you to break that code and integrate it into your system, you are not fully successful. So it will leave traces of certain qualities within you. You cannot break that code and make it a part of yours because it's a different and complex code. If you eat a leaf, a vegetable, a fruit, a nut or a sprout, this is much simpler. If you must eat non-vegetarian food, you must eat that which is furthest away from you. So generally, fish and water life is furthest away from you. So if you must eat non-vegetarian food, the best thing to eat is uh, you have a… you are on the coast. <laughs> fish is the best thing to eat that way. Personally, I divide my plate into four quarters. One quarter contains carbs, but I'm very selective with my carbs. The way I look at carbs is that I say to them that carbs can come in but it's like when you say to a person that you can come to my house but you must come with someone, you must come accompanied, you can't come on your own. So I would only consume carbs when they come with other nutrients like fiber, magnesium, zinc and so I would happily eat whole grains such as brown rice, personally I use a brand of brown basmati called lal kila. Whole bread would be okay. Personally, I use a brand called Country Harvest Quinoa and Flax and this is because it contains a good amount of omega-3 within the bread. So here the carb is coming with fiber as well as omega-3 and whole fruits. These would be my carbs. The other quarter would be cooked green leafy vegetables which mostly grow above the ground so these could be cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cabbage or cauliflower. The third quarter would be healthy protein that could be fish or lean meats or beans, tofu, soya bean, lentils, legumes. And the final quarter in my plate would be uncooked or raw. This would be salads like kale, spinach leaves, lettuce, etc. That's how I arrange my plate. I also like to include some fermented foods for my gut microbiome and that would include certain types of dairy such as paneer, soft cottage cheese, cheese such as cheddar cheese, certain types of probiotic yogurts like kefir and I also have plain yogurt with active bacterial cultures every single day. When choosing healthy fats, I am careful to choose mostly plant-based fats and those which are liquid at room temperature. So the healthy fats would be the omega-3 that we find in fish, also certain types of seafood and plant-based foods like avocados, olives, seeds such as pumpkin seeds, hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, 
excellent options for a breakfast cereal and nuts such as walnuts peanuts as long as they're not roasted or salted cashew nuts pistachios and these are excellent options for snacks i combine this kind of a hyper nutritious diet plan with some element of fasting along with sleep fasting is the other time when your body is healing when your body gets time to repair itself and a good 7 to 9 hours of sleep as well as getting a good amount of fasting also helps with cleansing your body that's your body's natural detox whatever you have health problems minimum 50% will go away in 6 weeks time namaskaram sadguru fasting on auspicious days has existed in india since time immemorial but many indians believe that it's unscientific and illogical until the work on autophagy induced during fasting has been awarded the nobel prize even i started doing intermittent fasting this year <laughs> so why are such beneficial ancient practices being labeled orthodox and then immediately implemented once there is a western approval that's because you don't have the right color of the skin <laughs> in i've been talking about this for 40 years all right and uh, i have seen hundreds and thousands of people who just become healthy and well simply because they are not fueling up all the time when the tank is filling but empty stomach is a good thing in the yogic sciences today modern science also is coming in line with this but what we know by our experience you will spend a billion dollars to come there because research is all about how many million dollars that's how it is your body and your brain works at its best only when your stomach is empty so we always make sure we eat in such a way how much ever we eat our stomach must be always empty within 2 to 2 and a half hours time maximum so we go to bed hungry always so 4:35 in the evening if i eat a meal it's only next day is this enough which am i looking okay hello <laughs> i'm not looking like your patient isn't it i am not going to come to you <laughs> because any correction and purification that needs to happen in the body your stomach needs to be empty it's very very important otherwise the purification on the cellular level will not happen you pile up things and then you have all kinds of problems the first thing is inertia in the body most people have made their systems into a new sense because their own body is a big impediment in their life anything they want to do their body will not allow them to do so in this there are many aspects one important aspect is people are eating much more than what they should eat see health is not something you can do from outside health is something you have to do from within from outside when something goes wrong you can seek some help but all the time something is wrong with you this means what you are a faulty machine yes all the time something is wrong with you why that's not how this is designed this is designed for health every cell in your body is designed to create health isn't it they're all working hard to create health except you if you do this you will see half your problems of health whatever you have health problems minimum 50% will go away in 6 weeks time if you do certain other things which may right now seem little extreme to you if you have a little yogic practice something meditative within you then you will see 90% of your problem will go out 10% if it still persists we can treat it so 4 to 5 days a week i would not eat after 5 pm in many cases if my heavy meal is any time after 3 30 pm that would usually be my last meal and after that until breakfast the next day i would consume water lemon water green tea 
or black coffee, but nothing containing any significant amount of calories or carbs. Of course, along with diet, nutrition, fasting, sleep, other aspects such as stress resilience, exercise, having positive social connections, and avoidance of addictive behaviors and substances is also crucial to achieve health. And this way you'll notice that even without having to have a particularly restrictive diet, even just having a hyper nutritious diet can allow you to lose weight and achieve metabolic health without overly restricting yourself. Here I would like to make a point about overly restrictive diets. Somehow there appears to be some kind of charisma or lure towards these diets. I'm a physician with over 25 years of experience managing my clients. I'm doing a postgraduate certification in nutrition from Harvard. However, despite of that, I only have about 20,000 followers on social media, while those people who are often advertising much more extreme and restrictive diets such as a carnivore keto diet or a no oil vegan diet appear to have many more followers, often in the millions. And it really defies logic why people appear to gravitate so much towards these extremes while not understanding that nutrition is a field which has a lot of nuance and the reality probably doesn't lie in an extreme vegan diet or a carnivore keto diet but somewhere in the middle and I hope that the contents of this video would have highlighted to you how important it is to have a nutritious and balanced diet. In my mind, those influencers on the carnivore keto side who are depriving their clients of essential food items such as fiber, which is so important for your gut microbiome, as well as those on the extreme no oil vegan side who are depriving their clients of omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B12 are doing a disservice to their clients. They're very likely causing harm to their clients and I hope that there will be some people who are subscribed to these extreme dietary ideologies who will understand the logic here and understand that the reality is more shades of grey, more in the middle, it has more nuance. There will be those in the carnivore keto community who say to you that all carb is bad. However, that's not true. The insoluble and soluble fiber that you get within the bran of a whole grain rice with its zinc, magnesium, healthy fats are really essential for our health. And we have discussed the benefits of consuming these and the beneficial effects these have on reducing risk of cardiovascular disease, cancer, etc. in previous videos. Similarly, those on the strict, no oil vegan side of things who are depriving their clients of seafood, fish and other kinds of food which contain omega-3, DHA, EPA and even vitamin B12 could be causing serious harm because these are foods which are required during pregnancy, during childhood, during older ages for normal neurological development, for vision, for brain growth, for eye health and on either extreme sides of the spectrum there is danger for those who have subscribed to this very extreme ideology of nutrition. Of course many of these strict vegan no oil gurus do recommend omega-3 as well as vitamin B12 supplements but to that I would say that I'm sorry but that just proves that your diet philosophy is flawed. If your diet philosophy was perfect then you would not require any supplements. And while I appreciate that many people who are strict vegans are so because of other non-nutritional considerations such as consideration for animal rights or for the environment, I certainly respect that. I am very sympathetic towards that. However, purely from a scientific and a nutritional point of view, I feel it needs to be said that a Mediterranean style or pescatarian style of eating is the most superior from a nutritional point of view and any person on those extreme diet 
spectrums such as a carnivore keto on one side or a strict vegan no oil on the other side needs to be called out if they make claims to be nutritionally superior to this kind of a diet. Once I finish my postgraduate certification in nutrition from Harvard, I plan to write a book and start a formal weight loss program. Until then, please remember to share this video with anyone who will benefit particularly pregnant women, nursing women, families with children and older adults in them. Remember to like the video, put in a comment in the comment section, share it, subscribe to the channel. I will see you at the next video.